Hi everyone, good morning, and this is Sir Kevin. And for today, for this particular session, I would like to share to you my interest in art. I've been doing a lot of artworks already for the past years, and I've started doing artworks in high school, but was able to really develop that in, in college and then later on when I started working as a teacher. But nonetheless, I would like to share to you some of my experiences before we will deal on what will be our activity for today. So just um, a backgrounder, I, uh, I love doing art, especially watercolor. So some of the things that you get to see behind me, these are examples of artworks that I was able to do using watercolor. But aside from watercolor, I also do artworks that would use acrylics. But nonetheless, I'm far more comfortable with watercolor. I would like to share to you also some of my artworks. So this one is Korean inspired artwork. And also I love to do some um, artworks that would be showing the silhouette of the forest or perhaps a winter, um, a winter theme um, artwork. I also do some um, portraits, but nonetheless, these are not really those portraits that would really look exactly the same uh, of the face of a person, but nonetheless, it would be uh, like this. And for this particular day, we will be doing an artwork that would help us develop our creativity and at the same time, even if you are not really good in sketching or if you're not really good in drawing, this would still be fitting for you. If you really love art and if you really enjoy um, making use of different colors, this would be a perfect activity for you. I, I call this activity um, Connect the Dot Art Challenge. I, I already made some videos creating uh, videos that are actually showing how to do the Connect the Dot artwork. But for today, I would also like to share it to you. So here's an example of what I did. Basically, the Connect the Dot artwork is a type of challenge related to art that would really help you see or acknowledge the creative side in yourself. So what we're going to do is we will just put random dots on the paper and we will connect them and then afterwards you will try to move around the paper and try to see a pattern okay and after identifying the pattern you get to see then you start coloring it uh, in this particular artwork i used watercolor but you, if you don't have watercolor you may also use crayons okay so crayons can also be a good uh, medium in this particular artwork so for this connect the dot art challenge the materials are very easy to find you just need to have a piece of paper it could be a punch paper or if you have an art paper that would be good as well so if you have long one paper it's okay if you have short one paper it's totally fine for as long as it is blank paper for you to put in your your work so I have here a couple of papers so you may also have that if ever you make some mistakes or if you don't want or if you cannot find a, a certain image out from the first one that you made you can still um, use another paper but let's try to use one for this activity and we also have ruler and we have the ball pen uh, that will be used to connect the dots later on and also to put the dots and lastly the crayon well, let me just put down my artwork so that you have enough space for it to So we will start by means of using a clean sheet of paper. Let me just look for a clean sheet of paper. And next is that you get your pen. Or if you don't want to use your pen, if you wanted to start with a pencil, it's okay. You may use also the pencil. So what you're going to do now is that you have to put in the dots randomly. So you just put them in different places. On the paper so you do not need to think first of what would be the figure because that would be our challenge so the first thing we need to do is just randomly place the dots like the ones that I'm doing right now so after you put in the dots perhaps you can make the dots bigger so that later on when you try to connect them you can easily identify the dots so just make the dots bigger let me just share that to you so there you go you have the dots and the next step is to use your ruler to connect the dots now at times when I, I do this I do not normally use ruler but I also notice that when I use ruler it can also have an effect uh, a good effect 
bring the output so it depends on you if you want to just connect the dots without using the ruler that's okay if you want to use the ruler then you may also do that for this particular um, activity let me just use a ruler okay so just connect the dots now again do not be too uh, critical in terms of connecting them if you're trying to figure it out what would be the image what you need to do now is just connect the dots okay without the, being very critical with what could be the output because that would be the next step okay so just connect the dots because sometimes if you don't want to use the ruler and you just want to connect them uh, I mean if you just want to connect the dots you can also create a certain artistic effect if the lines are not straight but for this particular one let me just have a straight line to somehow also copy the effect of having stained glass i'm not sure if you've been to some churches or chapels where you get to see these colorful windows with um artworks we call those stained glass so stained glass so that could also be an effect that we can create out from this activity so let me just finish this um, let me just point out or i mean connect all the dots by the way, you can also do this activity together with your brothers and sisters or your siblings or you can also do this with your mom and dad or with a family or, or with your family because this is very much easy to do and it doesn't require you to have a lot of materials and also it would not really require you a lot of time to make because it is easy and you just need a few materials and you can easily connect the dots and that would be that would be it so now i have connected or i mean i was able to connect all of the dots already now the next challenge is for us to see or try to look for an image what could be a possible image that we can come up from this activity or from this from this image so the image could be more or less animals or it could be human as well or it could be objects so it depends so that's why i said earlier that this activity is an activity that could really help you develop your creativity it allows you to be more creative in, ter in terms of looking into the image and what could be the possible output for that one so for you to be able to see an image for your art piece or for this particular output you try to move the paper from one side to another so you just change the of um, the, the line i mean the orientation of your paper so you can just look into it through this or you can just flip that one or turn it on this side and then this side or on this side and then try to see what could be the image you can get so let me just try to um, examine this one and try to see what could be the image that i can make At times it would take a minute or a second or it could be more than a minute for you to really see what with the image so when you move the paper from one side to another you can also create or you can look into or you can you might be able to come up with an image ready so you just have to be more creative and try to see which one would be best okay so for now I can see one image here I'm going to have this one I get to uh, see an image of a bird so here's the head and then the beak and then the wings so that could be one let me just try to see if i can have another way of uh, getting an image by means of moving the paper to one side mm -hmm. all right and ah yeah this one could also be um a person this could be the head and then the mouth and then the nose and then the neck so you can also have that image so i already have two possible images for this particular activity so it could be a, a bird or a person's face so let me just finalize which one should i be using i think i'll try to use this for the bird so next the next thing that you're going to do after you connect all the dots and then you're able to identify the image that you're going to use or the figure that you're going to do is that you try to improve you try to add more details to your work so for this particular output i'm going to make a bird out of this one so i'm going to put some details for me to be able to come up with a more um I don't know, to be to come up with a more uh, bird-like figure so let me just add some details to that 
Okay. So we have the beak. So for this one, you may use, or you may not use a ruler if you wanted to just put um, different lines or uh, different details or accessories. You may use ruler as well, but in my case, I don't want to use ruler for this now. So let me just connect and put some details that I already put in here. The, the beak and then I'll put the eye. Okay. And then let me just put some details for the wings. Also, a challenge by which you can um, practice your skills in terms of identifying the details that you get to see in some animals, especially if you were able to come up with an image of an animal. So, you can also add your knowledge on that. Okay. And also, I was able to put already some details with the eye and then with the beak and with the wings. If you want to add a little bit more details, it's also okay if you wanted to add perhaps uh, legs or feet or if you wanted to add some feathers, you may also do you may also do that. But if you just want to stick with the image that you're able to come up out from the dots that you connected, that's also fine. Okay? So in my case I will not add any more other details to this particular um, output. So I'm done with the details. So the next thing that we're going to do now is we're going to add colors. So normally I use watercolor for, for this activity because I'm far more comfortable with watercolor but I also wanted to use crayons since most of the graders would be using crayons, especially the young ones or the, I mean those in the lower grades. While those in grades three, I mean grades, yeah, I think grades three, four, five, and six are far more familiar already with um, watercolor, so you may also use watercolor. But if you are more fond of using crayon, and especially crayon is a bit less messy when you use it because it would not require water and paint, so you may use um, crayons. Now, just a heads up when we try to use crayons or when we try to apply colors to our output it doesn't mean that it has to be realistic if you wanted to be more creative and if you wanted to use different colors or those colors that you really love you may also use that so there's no strict um, rule that you really have to stick in terms of how you color the image it could be random colors or it could also be a combination of colors that would represent yourself so it could also be like uh, that could also be a consideration. So if you notice here, let me just grab this. You would see here that for this particular image, it's a dog. Okay, it's a dog. And I did not really use, or I mean, I really did not use colors that would really, or that we'd really normally see in a dog. So this is a combination of different colors. So you, you get to see this one, if you get to examine it a bit closer. There you go. So you have the eye and then the mouth the nose and then the ear and then the body and the legs so you get to see here a combination of different colors so there you get to see also that the dots are being connected so that's how you do it so for crayons you can also possibly do that so let me just uh, try to put colors in this one so here I'll try to use bright colors as well let me just use orange this one usually when I do artworks I really love to make use of colors that are brightly colored I really love to <coughs> excuse me I really love to use um, oranges red yellow um, green also because they somehow symbolize the vibrant colors of nature and it's very pleasing to the eye so if you are into those colors also you may do so. So what I'm trying to do here is that I place first orange and then I'll try to do some gradient effect or I'll try to put a color that is somehow related to the first one so it creates a gradient effect to the image. 
by the way, when you put colors, as much as possible, you try to consider also the combination. Because sometimes there are different colors, and when you put them together, or if you do put them individually, they seem to be very attractive, but if you put them together, or if you add another color to a certain color, it creates an effect that is not very much pleasing to the eye. But they say that art is subjective, so maybe you can experiment, okay? So, now with that. So this activity would normally range from perhaps, I think, 5 to 10 minutes. You can already come up with an art piece already. Now, what I can remember before, when I did this, I started making this one when I was in third year high school. What I used before was um, pastel, pastel art. So I created uh, different images out from the dust that I connected. And then after I made them, I made them colorful. And then I placed them on the walls of my room. And also the best one that I made, I placed it on my door, just right outside my room. So when there are visitors that would come to our house, they would normally see that and they get to appreciate. And they would normally ask my mom who made this and my mother would say it was me. So it was my way of sharing my talent at the same time trying to, to inform them that I can actually do some art pieces. There, I wasn't able to earn money during that time but lately I can also sell some of my art, art pieces and I get to earn some and get to share some of the earnings that I get to uh, we're less fortunate brothers and sisters. There's a certain percentage that I get from the art for, uh, from from the earning uh, and then I share it to the less fortunate members of our community. So you can also do that. You can share your talent. You can also do some exhibits, art exhibits. You can join art exhibits or you can do um, solo exhibits. And then perhaps later on you can sell your artworks and you can start up with your savings or you can have a little bit of budget for emergency purposes or if you want to earn something for that particular month or year then you can try that as well but if you don't want to sell your work or if you don't want to do some exhibits if you want to feel comfortable if you want to feel more relaxed artwork is one of the best um, choices that you can choose so that you get to relax you get to chill um, you get to somehow slow down and get to enjoy um, your company your, yourself okay? this is also a time that you get to reflect if you wanted to be alert and you wanted to do this by yourself it's also a good time to quiet down and just allow yourself to allow yourself to develop your creativity and perhaps know yourself more because through this activity you get to see um, how you are responding to a certain challenge like art challenge you get to respond and how you see things like for example you get to have a particular set of image and how you interpret that this is also um, a challenge or this is an activity that would tell us that we see things differently so you might see this um, art piece in this particular angle as beautiful but another person would see this um, would see the artwork uh, beautiful on another angle so that's also the concept of art it could be subjective so it would matter from one person to another what is far more important is that you get to share a piece of yourself through a piece of yourself through these um, artworks okay so I'm done with the wings already now let me just try to use another color let me use red There are also some articles that you get to see on your textbooks or it could be on your or when you try to browse the internet you would see some symbolisms of the colors so you may also use that um, idea that when you try to add colors there might be a certain symbolism for the colors that you add up 
on your RTDs. So later on when people would like to ask you what is the symbolism of the colors that you added here, you may be able to share it to them as well because colors could also be a way in which we can share what are our sentiments or what could also be our feelings during that time or what could be the, the existing condition perhaps uh, of your feeling or your emotions when you are making the art piece. Now you get to see here that the majority of the colors are bright colors when I use them. It also symbolizes my feeling right now that I'm very excited and very happy to share to you this simple activity that I used to do and I've been doing this actually to allow myself to relax and also develop and increase my skills in art. I've, I've done a lot of artworks already and some of them are kept only in, in my um, cabinet but I would take some time I would try to look for some time that I could choose the best ones and have them framed since some of my artworks already are hanging on the walls of my room and also in our house. There, there are also some that were already being bought by some friends and some supporters. So it's also a good experience that you get to share your talent to, you, to people and it's very comforting and it's, very, it's, uh, it's a proud moment when you get to see your artworks being um, appreciated by people as well by your friends or your family members so here in this particular activity even if you are not really good in art you can still practice it you can still do the challenge because this is pretty much simple to do you just add colors you just need your artistic side now others would say that they're not very artistic uh, but I beg to disagree because everyone is gifted by God with talents in terms of art and we just always have to remember that art is subjective it could it would um, it would depend on the person looking to the art but what is far more important is that you're able to pour in your soul uh, your feelings or emotions that's basically the aim of art to share your emotions to share your feelings through artwork through an artistic avenue okay so when you also do some coloring you may try to add some details in terms of having curved lines when you add the color or you can overlap colors it depends on you for as long as it creates a certain pattern it can also be um, a thing that you can consider this is also a good um, activity that you get to do with your friends and you try to see if you will be able to come up with the same image and also you can try to do some um, challenges and perhaps you can also try to ask your friends how would they interpret the image that you're able to come up what could be the possible figure that they can think of after seeing those dots being connected so this is a very good experience very good activity by which you get to connect more with your friends and your family you get to share your creative side as well just get rid of those extra colors that might agree with the art piece okay here what I'm trying to do is that I try to add different colors and there's a certain pattern that I'm also doing that would somehow resemble the feathers of the bird so it could be more attractive so 
so far I hope you're enjoying and you are interested with doing this one and later on if you are more comfortable already then you can start doing your own stuff and then let me see your work let's just share your output and let's try to see what are the fossil images that you're able to come up now I am down to the B and to the I so let me just try to add more details to Colored part of the eye, which is a gradient color, and we just choose perhaps what could be the color that we can add. We can add more purple just to put some contrast in the eye. And for the beak, what could be the color that we can use? Perhaps we can have a family of colors in purple sight. For those who are also good in shading, you can also practice that one here because sometimes shading also creates a certain effect to the drawing. It creates depth, it creates emphasis as well, it creates um, or it highlights the details of the work so that it could also be done. By the way, when, when I made mention that you can randomly put dots, when you try to connect them, it could also be that you can come up with two different images or two different figures uh, from one paper. So it's possible, so you may also add other dots here at the bottom or on this side here, and then you get to add more figures. So that could also be a possibility, but for now, let's just focus or let's just try to have one uh, image just to allow ourselves to get the tune first and how we can possibly do this and later on we can experiment and try to be more um, experimental with our output so here we go i'm done let me just share my output so here we go Save the bird you get to see the beak by the wing so it does not mean that we say third it has to be fully complete in terms of the parts you get to see here so there's only uh, one way and then there seems to be no legs at all and then the beak is a bit big and uh, it's not proportional but nonetheless it looks like a bird so that's basically the challenge it doesn't need to be perfect at all for as long as you get to have an image and that you get to see that image in the output by means of uh, connecting the dots and putting up the colors. So I hope that you've learned something from this activity. This is very, pretty much simple to do. Just randomly put dots on the paper, connect them using a ruler, or you can just simply uh, just connect them without the use of this ruler and try to look for a possible image that you can do where you can come up from the connected dots and then add colors. You may use crayons or you may also use watercolor. So, let me just um, put the output closer to you so you can get to see the image. So if you notice there, uh, below the wings, you get to see that there are some details here in terms of how I put the colors blue, green, and yellow green. So it also creates a certain pattern that would add up to the aesthetic effect or to the beauty of the artwork. And also here with the B with the I so you can see the details. So also when we use crayons, when we add uh, the colors, it doesn't have to be pretty much perfect, especially if you find it a bit difficult to hold on to the coloring materials for as long as you just make sure that these colors are within those areas that you're supposed to put in then you are totally okay so it doesn't need to be pretty much perfect for as long as you enjoy doing it that's the more important thing to put in your mind so again this simple connect the dot art challenge is an activity that would really help you see your artistic side develop your creativity and develop your art skills more than anything else it is an activity that will allow you to discover yourself discover your talent and share your talent so i hope that you've learned something from today's activity and you also do 
on this activity, this art, this art challenge, you may use hashtag connect the dot art challenge, or you can also do uh, hashtag art challenge, XEGS, it depends. And you may share your art pieces to your classmates or to your teachers, your class moderator, and also to your family. The main purpose of this activity is for you to develop the talent and perhaps to share your talent. So that's our aim. We celebrate the talent given to us by God and by means of celebrating, we accept it, we make use of it, and we share it to everyone. Alright? So I hope you learned something from today and please continue to be grateful, always be kind, and be generous. Those are the things that we also need to remember during this pandemic time. Okay, so this has been Sir Kevin, and I hope you enjoyed our activity for today. Bye bye. God bless you, and I'll see you around.